I really just wasn't sure what to expect when I started using this setup. This is the Tokina 11-16 f2.8 and the Metabone Speed Booster XL. I've been using this setup in combination with my Lumix G7 for the past couple of months, so in today's video I just want to share with you all of my observations and just what I think about this lens after that much use. We can, we can put this back now. The first thing that surprised me about this lens was the build. It's actually pretty large and relatively heavy, especially compared to the small camera I'm using it with, but it does feel very solid. I got this lens because I wanted to mimic the look of a 16 millimeter f2.8 on full frame. That's the setup you see people like Peter McKinnon using in their videos. Because this lens has an f2.8 aperture, it performs pretty well in low light and has a pretty shallow depth of field for a wide angle lens. It's also just a very wide field of view and personally the thing I like about that is that it makes height and distance and scale and movement just look more dramatic no matter what. If you're standing on a cliff, then shooting with a wide angle lens is going to make it look that much taller. If you're in a large room, a wide angle lens is going to make it look that much more spacious. If you're on a train, shooting with a wide angle lens is going to make it look like it's moving even faster. However, the downside of having such a wide field of view is that you have to get incredibly close to your subject in order to get a good close-up shot. And because of the distortion, this lens is absolutely terrible for portraits. So whether you're using that wide angle to your advantage to get a more dramatic shot or making sure you're careful to not get a bad shot due to that distortion, it's very important to be aware of what you're shooting with. This lens is very sharp and I haven't seen any noticeable chromatic aberration even around the edges of the shot, but unfortunately it's not stabilized. This lens also does have some very minor fisheye type distortion, but it's not going to be noticeable on 95% of your shots, and when you do occasionally have that shot where you can see it, you can fix it very easily in post. Unfortunately the autofocus on this lens is very loud and very slow, and the way it switches from manual focus to autofocus using this ring on the lens is just kind of clunky and weird. So you basically have no choice but to use manual focus when you're shooting with this lens. But thankfully, manually focusing on a wide angle lens is extremely easy. Now let's talk a bit about the speed booster. It's the other half of this setup and it's a really, really nifty tool. Basically what this allows me to do is mount Canon lenses on my Panasonic camera and get a wider field of view and a shallower depth of field. The camera I'm using crops the image by a factor of two, so when I use this 11mm lens, the camera effectively crops it to a 22mm lens. What the speed booster does is it reverses that crop by a factor of 0.64, so instead of this turning into a 22mm lens, it's going to look like something closer to a 14mm lens. So here's what this lens looks like when I use it without the speed booster, and here's what it looks like with it. The downside of using this particular setup is that the lens is made for APS-C size sensors, not full frame. So when I have the lens zoomed all the way out to 11 millimeters, you can actually see a bit of a vignette around the edge of the image. The vignette that you're seeing is actually the edge of the lens, because this lens was designed to be used on a camera that has a crop factor of 1.6. So when I use it on this setup, which has a crop factor of about 1.3, you can see the edge of the lens in the shot. If you shoot in 4K, the camera actually crops in a little bit more, which is enough to hide that vignette around the edge. You're also not gonna see the vignette if you use the Speed Booster Ultra, which has a crop factor of 0.71 instead of 0.64. What I choose to do is just zoom in to around 12 and a half millimeters, which is enough to get rid of the crop. It's not perfect, but it works. The lens itself isn't too expensive, but combining it with the speed booster is going to make this a pretty pricey setup for a lot of people. But the good thing is that the speed booster isn't just made for this setup. You can use it with pretty much any other Canon lens that you want to put on your camera. And if you still don't want to spend that whole like $650 on an adapter, then there are cheaper options available like the Viltrox Speed Booster. Before I go, one final thing I really like about this lens is that you can use it on almost any camera setup, not just the one I'm using it with right now. This lens was designed to look great on APS-C size sensors, and even if you're shooting with a full frame camera, you can zoom into 16 millimeters, and then you basically have a 16 millimeter f2.8 which is a great setup in itself. After a couple months of shooting with this lens, I've gotta say it's pretty gimmicky, but the results look great. There are a lot of things to keep track of and make sure you don't mess up, but if you do it right, you get some really nice footage. That's all for today's video. I hope you learned something from it, and if you want to see more about these items or any of the other gear that I use to make my videos, 
you can check out my kit page, which is linked in the description. And if you decide to purchase anything using the links on that page, then you'll actually be supporting my channel a little bit at the same time. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video, and if you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. But that's all for today. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one.